hey you guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here today we're going to be talking about ryan edwards latest hearing um last week when we were doing a few lives i told you guys i was like ryan edwards has court coming up his court date was supposed to be on the 12th for some reason uh, the 12th was wednesday but for some reason it was moved until friday well, we finally got an update. A reporter from The Sun was actually there. And what's so ironic is I was looking at the pictures and I actually know which reporter was there because she was also the reporter that was at Josh Duggar's trial and um, sentencing. And she's the reporter that I met and uh, become cool with. So anyways, you guys, we're going to go over what took place because I'm kind of shocked this happened so quickly. Um, also, you guys, I tried a TikTok trend and it failed. I don't know if you guys see the TikTok trends where you, I, it's, it's literally, and I'm going to go into it really quickly. Don't do it. I try to, so you don't have to. They say, a makeup artist said if you put like white, like white uh, makeup like on your face, uh, like it's like a blank canvas, and then you do your makeup, that it gives like this really like filter effect. Well, I did white, and now my, I look white. <laughs> I mean, like, look at my arm. Now my face. Um, anyways, so I feel like I'm a little pale today, but, um, so I wanted to tell you guys, if I look like a ghost, this is why. We're going to roll the intro, give YouTube time to stop notifications, and then I'll tell you guys about what took place that is shocking to me. So let's go ahead, let's roll the intro, and we're going to get into it. Okay, guys, so um, let's get into this. So I told y'all that Ryan had a court date. It was supposed to be the 12th for some reason. It got pushed back to the 15th. But either way, a reporter from The Sun was there. And not only um, was someone there, but they recorded it. Like, it is recorded. It is up on The Sun. So shout out to The Sun for recording what took place. I screen recorded it. And let me tell you guys, if you watch it from the sun, no shade, no hate. Um, but when you when you record something, like sometimes the background noise is just a lot. You know what I'm saying? And then the original audio, the background noise was so bad that you could barely hear what was saying. So I had to screen record it. I had to go through and like, I literally had to put it in like through my software like five times to remove background noise. Like literally because I did it one time and it was still like, like too much. So I had to do it a lot just to get it to where you could kind of make out some of what was said. And still, some of it I wasn't sure until I went back and watched. Um, I actually read through everything that was said. And I was like, oh, that's what they said. Either way, we're going to watch it together. We're going to watch Ryan Edwards showing up to his hearing in an orange jumpsuit. Jumpsuit? Jumpsuit? He's got handcuffs. He's got shackles. He is on. Um, he's got yellow orange slides. McKenzie was there. And McKenzie was not happy. I don't know if she was happy with the ruling. I don't know if she was unhappy with the ruling. Or I don't know if she was just like unhappy with the fact that the reporter like panned the camera to her. But she did a big old one of these. Except not the singer. But she literally flipped the camera off, which I'm kind of like, okay, all right. I, you know, if I'm there with something like this, I might would feel like, don't, don't, I, don't look at me right now. You know what I'm saying? It seems like she took her lunch breaks or whatever there really quickly. She's in her work clothes. Um, but she showed up. Jenna and Larry, as well as Ryan's aunt, showed up. We're going to go ahead. We're going to watch it. And I'm going to give you guys all the deets as to what took place. Like I said, I removed the background noise as much as I could. And I added closed captioning. So um, there will be some things that on there I put in inaudible, like I couldn't tell. But I'm going to go through like almost like a transcript and kind of tell you guys what was said. So even the things that you can't really understand. We should be able to, I, I should be able to uh, tell you what was said. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it, you guys. That should not have been frozen. Let me restart that. Sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. That's really weird. All right. So there Ryan is. He walks in. He kind of looks over to see, you know, who's at the gallery, whatever. These are his two attorneys right here. This is Ryan's attorneys, I think. Well, I know for sure this female is. Maybe the male is the DA or the prosecutor, but this lady right here is for sure his attorney. So 
What do you uh, suggest that we do today? You could have talked about it. Uh, yeah, so we talked about it. I mean, Okay. Is there a separate order of protection for surgery to take report? My understanding is there may be, and that it is being handled on the civil side several times as well. But Ms. Edwards is aware that so long as that exists, they also can be We're talking about that. I don't know if that's I'm, I'm assuming it is. I'll always check it out. Um, I would ask again um, to ensure to clarify, Mr. Edwards cannot leave the Davis facilities and then be there on this photo, is that correct? Can't walk through all the rooms. Oh, yeah, the counselors occasionally take them around the law or whatever the color law. Okay, so what he said right there is I thought he was saying something about getting something on the record, but what he's saying actually is he did have time to look through Ryan's medical records, and it is over 200 pages of his medical records, and he's going to say that what he saw through the medical records is actually disturbing. So that was like a mistake on my end. That afterwards, when I read through like all the articles, I was like, oh, he didn't say we need to get this on record. He's saying, like, I looked over his medical records. So, you guys, I go through, like, I literally sit there and turn this up to the biggest volume, like the loudest volume possible to try to hear what's being said. Sometimes I think I, sometimes obviously I do get it wrong because I thought he was saying, let's put this on the record, but he's saying, I listened, I read through his medical records. And in a minute, you're going to see where I put that. He said something about going over 200 something pages. That is in reference. His, Ryan's record, like medical records, is over 200 pages. And that is what he's referring to. And that was about 221 pages of us. Right there, he said it's disturbing that the medical records were disturbing. And Ryan's just like looking down. So if you want to look in the past, there are some underlying things here. So there he's telling Ryan, like if you want to, like if you want to get help, like you need help, but there's also some underlining issues here. Like you have other things outside of an addiction. Like I think basically implying like you have some some mental situations you need to take care of and, and see to. Okay. Can we go our next day your subject? Probably to be working for the day now. August 14, let's do this at 30. Okay, anything further? He asked Ryan right here, he says, are you ready for this? And <laughs> Ryan nods, let me, Ryan nods and says, yes, your honor. And then 
I think he said, I think you are. Or I'm sure you are at this point. So if you watch, he directly like, are you ready for this? And Ryan gives like a little nod. Thank you. Keep in mind, this is the judge that is, but first off, there's two judges that Ryan has went before that he is friends with both of them. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows both, like his fa family friends with both of these judges. Like he, for this judge, this judge has a son that was like a groomsman in his wedding, I believe. The other one, there's a, like that, the other judge had a daughter that went, Ryan went to school with. So like he, this judge actually lives on the same block as him. Like they know each other. I don't know why he wouldn't recuse himself or whatever. Um, but either way, we're going to go over this article from The Sun. But before we go over it, I want to look at some pictures with you guys from The Sun. So these are pictures that the court reporter from The Sun took. So let's go ahead. Let's look at it. All right. This is Ryan. I wish it'd be like a full picture somehow. I don't know how I can get it. I tried to like zoom it out and I'm still not really getting there's Ryan. Now, this is wild AF. There's Jenna Larry, and this is Ryan's aunt. Um, I don't know how um, Julie Chrisley got out of prison to come to Ryan's court date, but there she sits. I'm just kidding. Does she not look like Julie Chrisley right here? Does Ryan's mom, Jen, not look like Julie Chrisley? For a second, I was like, wait, wait, hold up. Whoa. I literally, for a second, was like, why does she look just like Julie Chrisley in this photo? Either way, this is obviously Ryan's parents um, and his aunt, who looks like she just bought her first puppy. Um, here is Mackenzie. Right there. Someone, you know, panned the camera over to her, and she did not think twice about saying, you know what? Which I thought was wild. I was like, do, I was like, you know, I understand Mackenzie's frustrations. Well, not to the fullest degree, but kind of. But I'm like, girl, thank God, like nobody saw that. Like a judge and nobody saw that because I don't know if she would get in some sort of trouble for throwing up the bird in court. I don't know, but I feel her on that. I feel her on that. Like, you know what? Like this is her life. These are children are involved in this, and and I, you know, um. All right, let's see. Are there any more? All right. Now I'm gonna go over this report and just give you uh, give you guys all the details. It is a 28 day program, which I think is what it's a 28 day program, and then he's gonna go to a halfway house. And I just don't think this is. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think you guys let me know. Okay, so Ryan, um, he is 35 years old. He's a year younger than me. He appeared in Hamilton County Sessions Court in front of Judge Gary Starnes. Um, he appeared Friday. Like I said, he was supposed to go Wednesday, but his court day got pushed back. Um, and he was sentenced just in April. So May, June, July, three months. We were three months into his 12 month sentence. And now he's going to be sent off to rehab probably next week. Okay. So he did not serve out his 11 months, 29 days. This hearing was for his charges of harassment, possessions of a controlled substance from his February 10th arrest, as well as driving under the influence and possession of a possession of a controlled substance from his April 7th arrest. Um, so the U.S. Sun is exclusively revealing that Ryan will be released from prison and will be sent to a rehab facility called CADA. A CADA representative um, was there and told the judge that they will have a bed available for Ryan on July 18th, which is this coming Tuesday. Judge Starnes said he reviewed over 200 pages of Ryan's medical records, and he described them as disturbing. He also said that Ryan has Ryan needs to get help with underlining issues. The representative from the facility said that we will be making some sort of treatment plan for Ryan. He can go there to CADA um, and then go to Oasis. So Ryan will go to CADA for 28 days, then go to Oasis, which is a halfway house. He will live there while in CADA as well as the, ha as well as the halfway house. Ryan will get injections. Um, 
Judge Stars also ordered that Ryan get a hair follicle test to make sure that he is clean before they administer his shots. A lawyer for the prosecution wanted to confirm that Ryan is unable to leave the rehab facility. I thought that was Ryan's lawyer, but maybe maybe it was DA. I don't know. The Cater um, representative said that he would not be able to leave the, the facility anytime unsupervised. The inpatient rehab is 28 days. Ryan's lawyer then mentioned him having contact with his children, children Jagger, who is four, and Stella, who is three, and she was said they ask about him. So, um, and she said, you know, he wants to speak to them on the phone. The kids ask about him. The prosecution said McKenzie understands that it is important for the kids to have a relationship with their father. The judge agreed to lift the no contact order so that the kids can communicate with Ryan through McKenzie because before that, before, so previously, Ryan has had to call his parents' house, Jen and Larry's, and talk to his kids. So it seems like McKenzie is allowing Jen and Larry to get Jagger and Stella like every other weekend or something. And at those times, Ryan calls his parents' house and he talks to the kids. But what he wants is to be able to talk to them through McKenzie as well. Like if, you know, maybe he can only talk to the kids once a month because that's only the amount of times that his parents gets the kids. So maybe he wants to be able to call on a more regular basis. So he wanted to get it approved that he can actually call McKenzie to talk to the kids. And McKenzie says she had no issue with that. Um, but that it only be for that. The judge agreed to lift that so they could communicate. Judge Starnes ruled, we'll give you a furlough. It's time for you to go to the program. This is your last chance. You need to do what you can. If you violate rehab, if you leave, you will be charged with escape and you will get consecutive sentences. He then said, you don't want to spend two to three years in custody when you can get treatment. So he has another court date for August 14th. Like I said, Jenna Larry, they were there. Mackenzie was there. She did not interact with Jenna Larry while she was at this hearing. She actually sat on the opposite end of the room. The family seemed nervous. Larry shook his leg throughout the hearing, um, while Jen and Mackenzie seemed solemn. Ryan was previously in court on Wednesday, June 7th, um, as his mom, Jen, in a rehab center in Chattanooga, Tennessee, called Cata, testified at the hearing. So at his last hearing, which we don't have footage of that, but at his last hearing, his mom testified on his behalf as well as a CADA representative. Um, the representative requested that Ryan be sent to rehab when a bed was available and began Vivitrol shots to help curb his opioid dependence. Um, now, Ryan was previously admitted to rehab on March 16th and was discharged on April 3rd, but that's when he left. He was supposed to stay longer than that, but he left. Um, at this hearing, the state's attorney called an officer to take the stand. That officer explained Ryan's April 7th arrest for the DUI and the possession of a controlled substance. And the officer said, I was dispatched for a white male in a white pickup truck who was unconscious and unresponsive. The vehicle was running in drive. The truck rolled into the curb on the driver's side. The curb stopped the vehicle. It was just Mr. Edwards in the vehicle. He was unconscious and unresponsive. Fire was there, like fire and rescue. They were using a lockout kit to gain entry in the vehicle. He did not regain consciousness until he was put in medical and administered Narcan. There were two small baggies on Mr. Edwards, a white blue powder substance and a crystal substance. A lawyer for the state then said Ryan has a drug problem. He had an opportunity to pursue rehabilitation, and he failed to do that. He was there for two weeks. He left the facility uh, despite the fact that he was told not to by the staff. The staff was trying to keep him there. He was ordered to be there for 45 days. He somehow got back to Chattanooga, then a block from the courthouse. While so under the influence, in his vehicle, he ran into the curb and passed out. He could have hit people. He was a danger to himself and the public. His option is to get clean or to die. There will be a request for more rehabilitation. The opportunity he had, he squandered. That is disrespectful to the court, and it makes a mockery out of the court. Um, Ryan's lawyer then said he is addicted to drugs. We all know there's a good person deep down inside of there somewhere wanting to get out. That person is hammered deep down because of the drugs. We all want what's best for him um, and the community. We ask at some point, not today, that Ryan be 
able to receive sufficient time to be punished and um, think about what he's done, but then consider an alternative. We are all disappointed. It's a small town. We all know each other. We all know him. We want him to do better. There's a unique treatment option. We're not asking the court to suspend his sentence. Not then, but they did. They then called up the director of court services who recommended Ryan receive monthly shots and attend a two-year program. I'm about a two-year program. Like, because I don't know. She said he would go into a residential program at some point. He could get a once-a-month shot. It curbs cravings coupled with treatment. Just a shot isn't going to help. He says he will do it. He says he will go into a facility, then step down into a halfway house, a separate living house. They can do counseling for up to two years, probably longer than that, but that's like with coupled with the program, probably. The judge then said, we all have known Mr. Edwards and his family. He's a very fine young man, a very talented man at what he does. We've all watched him grow up. He's not a bad guy. He just got addicted to hardcore drugs. He's an extreme danger to himself. He died on Broad Street and had to be brought back to life. You would have been dead. You realize that. He's a danger to the public by driving his truck while on drugs. Rehab won't do any good because he's not going to do it. He needs to grow up. You have three kids. You may have some problems with your wife, but you still have three kids. I'm trying to save your life. So the judge then revoked. That was, you know, when the judge revoked his um, probation, which was 11 months and 29 days. And then it sentenced him to serve that. But now here we are three months into it. Next week, he's going to be sent off to um, a rehab facility for 28 days where he will, like I said, have to take a hair follicle test. And then he will be administered that shot called Vivitrol. It's a one, once a month shot. So 28 days after that, he's going to be going into a, um, what's it called? My mind just went blank. Sober living, like a sober living um, facility. And he will spend some time there. So I don't know, you guys. I feel like he needed to serve a little bit longer in jail. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know. Part of me is like, a part of me has thought like jail doesn't really help addicts. Like they need treatment. Um, But I don't know. I just feel like for the crimes that he did commit, like threatening McKenzie's life. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe that goes along with like maybe whatever mental conditions they've established that he may have through. because. I'm sure he's gotten like a psych evaluation at this point, you know, and the judge said his medical records were over 200 pages long and he's went through them and they are disturbing. So maybe he's bipolar. Maybe there's something else there that we're, you know, we're, we don't know. Um, but what he did wasn't right or safe for anyone. Yeah. Addict or not. I wish the 28 days was longer, like six months at least. Would have been nice if he served more time in jail as well. Yeah. Then what happens if he uses while also getting the shots? I think he could get really, really, really sick, I think. Um, what happens if you take drugs while on vivid fiction? Let me see. Isn't that how it normally works? Like if you were taking like a maintenance medication for an addiction, if you take that drug, won't you get like sick? Ooh, it can lead to an overdose, coma, or death. But more than likely he won't crave it because that's what happens. Like it craves the uh, like desire for it. That's what I feel like. I just feel like he needs something longer. I don't know. I feel like he needs something longer. But like he needs something longer. I don't know. And what's going to happen if Ryan gets sent to this facility in 28 days, he gets out of rehab, and then he's in the halfway house. And you know what my friend told me? My friend who, you guys have met her. She talks to you, she's talked to you guys about how she's a recovering addict. You know what she told me is before she wanted to get help, all these places they sent her, like AA, NA, she met other addicts and they like did it together. You know what I'm saying? Like until she was ready to get clean, she didn't. Even though, you know, in and out of this, in and out of that, in trouble. Like I've heard that before that a lot of times addicts that are not really ready to get help. When they are sent to these places, they usually find the other people that are still using. And then they start using together. So I, I just don't know. I don't know. 
My friend is all that shy and he's not in a facility. It seems to be doing well for him when it comes to opiates. But now my friend struggles with benzos, even though they're prescribed. Oh, wow. Ryan will never get better unless he wants it. That's what I worry about. So many rehabs are all for the money. They will keep you high. They will get you high to keep you there. System is really, oop, really sad to think the, ama uh, the amount of women who are resting in peace because of a judge's decision to let these men lose back in society. Protection orders in my country do diddle squat. I know. Diddly squat. I know. So it's really sad because I'm like, I just think he needed a little bit longer in jail. I think he, you know what I think? I think he needed to do at least six months out of that year. Minimum. And then sit to a rehab facility for probably another six months. That's what I think. Because Ryan was not just diddle dabbing in drugs here and there. He was a full-fledged, bona fide heroin addict. Like, almost like the worst of the worst. You know what I'm saying? Like, this man is going to need a lot to remain sober. A lot. I've heard, like, recovering from, like, uh, heroin is, like, the worst almost. If not the worst. So, uh, I just hope. This is something that the judge is going to reg regret. I hope Ryan doesn't get sent to the sober living home and then start doing what he needs, whatever, you know, doing what he wants to do again. And um, I don't know. I feel like he got off too easy. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of shocked that two months, wait, let's see, April, May, June. Yeah, three months into his one year sentence. One year. He, three months. I don't know. It's like, did Judge Starnes do this because he knew the family? Is he doing this as a favor? Because I think minimum he should have stayed another, like, for sure, at least six months. Minimum. He died. Exactly. Came back to life. Yeah. Especially because he didn't make the decision to seek treatment on his own. He sure didn't. He needs to be in more trouble. He didn't want to be sober. And he won't work unless he's serious. It's really sad that Mason McKenzie. I know. Um, there's another, let me see. There's another article that shows some more pictures. So I want to. Show you guys that really quickly, and then we're gonna end this one because I got um some more update information on Nathan. More information on what took place between him and his sister. Y'all, Nathan, wild, like wild it out. Nathan really went crazy. Nathan went legit crazy and like tried to kill his sister. Wild. All right, let's see. All right. So here's um, some more photos that was taken at the sun. Let me go up here. So there's Ryan walking in. It sucks because Ryan is a decent looking guy. Maybe not in this particular photo where it looks like he was sniffing a fart. <laughs> um, but normally, normally he is. Most addicts suffer from struggle with complex trauma. Wow. That makes a lot of sense. You know, that makes sense that they have some have existing mental condition, mental health situation. Okay, so there we are. This is the judge, obviously. Judge Starnes, Ryan in the orange, the Cato representative in the middle. And then I think this is a representative for the state. And I think this is Ryan's attorney, I do believe. And there's Mackenzie coming in. And I spy with my little wife, the Sun Reporter. I'm not going to point her out because I think, well, no, even her Instagram page says that that's what she does for work. But um, there she is right there. That's, um, here is Jen and Larry and Ryan's aunt. Gosh, she looks like Julie Chrisley to me. That's so wild. I never saw it before, but now I am. Okay, Nat. He was. Are you going to about the new cup of Ellie? Yes, I am. I am, Shana. I, I, I was actually trying to go through them earlier. There's so many filings, though. It's kind of, I think I'm just going to do the interrogatories. But um, we're going to do a quick update on Nathan. And um, I think then we'll go through the interrogatories. Why are they giving him prison? Wait, what? 
is going to work for him if he's been on mat in the past. What's mat? If he has ever been on mat, it would be a completely different story. What's mat? I think a part of the rehab deal should be needing to distance himself from his parents. Enablers can be dangerous people. My nephew just did two years for messing with his girlfriend's house that they lived in. It's a shame that some get so many chances. Exactly. Exactly. If this was a, a regular, smegular person, the judge Starnes did not know, like, what would be the sentence? You know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel like he's getting offered. Oh, okay. Maintenance addiction treatment. Yeah, that's what they're saying he will get. He's going to get, um, it's going to be coupled. So he's going to get the um, shot coupled with, like, um, counseling and stuff like that. That's what I was wondering if she meant. Where am I supposed to replace the A with an E? Where? Medication assisted treatment method on Suboxone. It is the 100 percent only way to keep an opiate an opiate clean. Got you. Okay, you guys. Um, did he pay her off for wrecking the house? Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. I don't know. So anyways, you guys, leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I would love to have you as a part of the LLB channel. Also, we have the other channel, The Fatal Files, which I haven't uploaded there. And I mean, I just have not had time. But we're going to come right back in a little bit to talk about more details that's coming out about what took place between Nathan and his sister when he literally tried to kill her. The cops, it's now come out what happened when the cops got there and how he denied it. But then he freaked out. Whenever they arrested him, I mean, banging his head in windows and such. So join me back here shortly. If I find out anything about the house, about, you know, what took place in regards to who's going to pay for the damage done to the house, I'll let you guys know. I've tried to re reach out to McKenzie in the past, but um, it's always on Instagram. You know, if somebody doesn't follow you back, your messages go in like this file that's in like Neverland. The Neverland because nobody ever nobody ever checks it. You know what I'm saying? So like I have like messages to like several people that's in a file they'll never probably see. But um I would like to talk to her. But hopefully, hopefully somehow her home is getting fixed and maybe she can sell it or whatever. It's probably bad memories. Um he was also on the last reunion. I guess it didn't help. I don't know anything about how it worked. Oh, I think I think you're right. I think he has talked about being on like Suboxin or something, like Suboxin or Subutex. That's been mentioned on one of the reunions. So, anyways, you guys, let me your thoughts. We're going to be back here shortly to talk about Nathan. And then I'm going to try to do the 7 a.m. Katie Joy um, filings in the lawsuit. There's new, some new filings that came out a couple days ago. And it is a lot, a lot, like 30 pages or something crazy. And we're going to go over the interrogatories, which is basically where they ask her, have you, ever bought, so, have you ever bought your followers? If you did, how much did you pay for them? And how many did you buy? Do you have any, like, sock accounts? If you do, What's the information to them? Who told you that Robert Shin was a cult leader? Who told you that he trafficked humans? Who told you X, Y, Z? She was supposed to answer these questions, and she did not. And now they're basically asking for a motion to compel, which is where they're asking the judge, make her answer these questions. So we're going to try to get to that tonight. It's going to be a long stream, though, I assure you, probably. And I might have to break it up into two streams. I don't know. Anyways, you guys, give me Give me a thumbs up on this video if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys back here uh, later, shortly. Bye, guys.